coming into the season, everything we were told about Manny Diaz was that it was about putting pressure on, uh, creating disruptive plays. You use a statistic called havoc plays to measure that. Before we talk about what Penn State's done, could you explain what the havoc play is? And it is the sum of turnovers, sacks, tackles for loss, and pass breakups that a defense has as a function of their overall plays in a game. So if you have 20 of those things in 100 plays, you have a havoc rate of 20%. I, I look at it the same way, but I do total havoc plays in a game uh, as well instead of just the percentage. Well, in looking at the first five games that Penn State has played, to the casual observer, it seems that Manny Diaz has done a great job in creating these havoc plays. What do the numbers tell you? Yep. So since 2009, um, which is as far back as the site that I use goes, there have been 1,771 FPS teams. And Manny Diaz's team this year is fourth of those 1,771 in havoc plays generated at 21. So they have been absolutely phenomenal. Um, a lot of that is driven by pass breakups this year. So they are averaging 10.8 pass breakups per game. Uh, second in that same stretch is Oregon from 2010, who had 7.7. .7. So um, far and away, like this secondary is absolutely killing it. So I found it interesting that you kind of, you took this statistic and went a step further with something called the Havoc Index. Explain how what that is and how Penn State has performed with that. Yeah, and... When the Havoc stat originally came out, I, I was not particularly satisfied that, you know, a pass breakup is worth the same as an interception because, you know, a pass breakup at the end of the day is effectively just an incomplete pass, whereas um, an interception or a fumble recovery can be dramatic in the course of a game. So um, I developed the Havoc Index, which gives different weightings to different things. So uh, a turnover is worth one, um, a sack or a tackle for loss, which is certainly less disruptive than a turnover, but still more than a pass breakup is worth 0.5 and then a pass breakup is worth uh, 0 0.25 so you weight those things this year's penn state team is still better than any penn state team in recent memories so they have a havoc index of 8.2 which would again still be 24th best since uh 2009 out of those 1700 plus teams that i mentioned before and you know the best penn state team previous was 2018 which had a 7.9 and 2015 which had a 7.8 so so really, it's they're doing a fantastic job, and like we all expected this coming out of uh, or coming into the season because this is what Manny Diaz's signature is. Uh, the first game against Purdue, except for pass breakups, I don't think we saw a lot of it. But now the, everything is starting to click, and they're uh, getting turnovers at a higher than average rate. They're getting sacks and tackles for loss at nearly an average or slightly above rate. So um, they're really hitting on all cylinders right now. It's great to have all the havoc plays, but what you want to do more than anything else is prevent the other team from scoring. So scoring efficiency, this is number of points allowed per drive, which I would think would be a tremendous measurement of the quality of a defense. I think it is. I, I prefer, um, I, I like looking at points per drive just because it's, you know, some people will look at points per play actually, which is, you know, maybe too granular points per game is maybe a little bit too opaque um, because different games have different amounts of drives in them and things like this. But looking at points per drive, um, this year's Penn State team is giving up 1.2 points per drive, um, which is second only to the 2009 defense, which was very, very good at, at 1.1 points per drive. And they're only allowing scoring on 21% of their drives. So if you compare it to 2020, which was, we know, uh, a little bit rough for the Penn State defense, they were giving up 2.2 points per drive, so nearly double, uh, and allowing scoring on 36% of drives. So it really, it really changes the dynamic, right? When you have a team that is, and it, it's caused by a number of things. So it's caused by the turnovers, it's caused by the disruptive plays, it's caused by Barney Amore um, pinning teams deep and have making them drive a long way to score points. Like there's a lot of factors that go into uh, limiting points, and, and Penn State's doing it in spades right now. 